Hi, my name is Joanna and I'm a rising senior at Canyon Crest Academy. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about scarcity. So scarcity is the basic problem of economics and occurs when something is limited in supply and demand. It means that we have to decide what to produce with the resources we have. When there is a scarcity of goods, the supply decreases, so the price increases. The first type of scarcity is demand-induced scarcity. It occurs when there's a high demand for a resource. This can occur when there's an increase in population, growth in real GDP, or changes in preference. This graph shows the relationship between demand and scarcity. As the demand increases, the price for the same quantity of the resource increases, and so does the scarcity of the resource. An example of demand-induced scarcity was when there was a huge increase in demand for sanitary products like hand sanitizer at the beginning of the pandemic. This increase in demand caused hand sanitizer to become scarce because the supply of hand sanitizer could not keep up with the high demand for it. Next is supply-induced scarcity. It occurs when there is a low supply of a resource. This can occur when there is environmental degradation, such as soil erosion, resources put under threat, or crop failure. This graph shows the relationship between demand and scarcity. As the supply increases, the price for that resource, resource increases, and so does the scarcity. An example of supply-induced scarcity is when droughts occur, because it leads to a low supply of water. The low supply of water cannot keep up with the demand of water, which causes water to become a scarce resource. Lastly, structural scarcity occurs when there is mismanagement with regard to a resource. This can occur when there are distribution issues. An example of structural scarcity is a country that is abundant in water. Some suburban regions in the country are still lacking water, though, because they don't have the same access to this resource that people in the city do. This makes water scarce in that region. Hi, this is Mark Jane from South Pasadena High School, and I will be introducing to you guys what is Production Possibility Curve, which is PPC. So what is Production Possibility Curve? Production Possibility Curve presents potential prospects for the production of a pair of products. It's part of the program that pupils have to practice. This is very important for the study in economics. We will start with the table that shows production possibility of two goods, which are YouTube video and podcast discussion in this case. As shown in the chart, if a group of kids spend their time making YouTube videos, there will, no, there will be no production of podcast discussion. And if they decided to use all their time on podcasts, there won't be any production of YouTube videos. This shows the different combination of video and discussion the group can be making using their time. This is the production possibility curve, or sometimes called PPF, production possibility frontier. The reasons of this graph being so important are because this does not only show the production of products, you can also see scarcity, trade-off, opportunity cost, and efficiency. It shows scarcity because the graph tells us not to produce anywhere beyond the curve, which is because of limited re resources. Trade-off shows in the graph too by giving up podcast discussion for each YouTube video is made. Opportunity cost is also show showing the graph by telling specific discussion this group have to give up to be able to make YouTube videos. When producing more videos, less discussion are produced. And the number of discussion that is lost in the opportunity is the opportunity cost. And most importantly, this graph also tells efficiency. If this graph decided to do two videos and one discussion, which is doable but not efficient with the resource shown in the red dot. If this group decided to make three videos and seven discussion, which is impossible because the limited resource is not allowing that, showing the red dot too. The production curve can shift due to two main reasons. Number one is changing quantity and quality of resources. Number two is improvement of technology. The red dot that was impossible in the last slide discussed now is possible because better technology and changing quality of equality. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joey and today I will be teaching you about the basics of opportunity cost. So 
basically, I'll give you a general definition of opportunity cost. Uh, the general definition of opportunity cost is that when you choose an a alternative, the opportunity cost is the loss and potential gains in which you could have gotten from the other alternative. So this is an example, right? Straight up, all right, off the top. So let's just say, for example, you have the opportunity cost in this case, and the question is, calculate the opportunity cost of the third oven. So for example, to calculate the opportunity cost to produce three ovens, you have to divide by the number of cookies lost by the numbers of oven gain in this scenario, which result in three cookie divided by one oven, right? Uh, with therefore, opportunity cost of the third oven is three. Next up, we have constant opportunity cost. So now that we over we went over opportunity general definition and example of opportunity cost a little bit, there's also a special case called constant opportunity cost, where the resources are adaptable to produce both alternative goods, which is also a which would also result in a straight production possibility curve. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, next up, we have uh, the in opportunity cost we have a uh, law of increasing opportunity cost. So in opportunity, in opportunity cost, there's also a law called law of increasing opportunity cost, which means when production of one good increases over time, um, the, amount of, uh, the amount of the alternative good given up also increases, in other words, the opportunity cost. So in this case, if the production of capital goods increases in this case, the opportunity cost for a food also increases. Next up, we have uh, productive and allocative efficiency. So product, productive efficiency is focused on the most efficient way to produce the product, whereas allocative efficiency is focused on distribution of the product itself. So the graph shows above, shows all the points on the possibility curve, uh, points A, B, C, and D, as you can see on the uh, production possibility curve, are both allocative and productively efficient. Uh, however, Points E and F are inefficient since they are outside the curve, while uh, point G is unattainable at the moment because it is out of your reach. And uh, just uh, just disclaimer, all graphs and tables for opportunity costs are either referenced or taken from College Board or other sources. I source them and I do not own it. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening.